Welcome to a lesson on parametric equations of a line in R3. A line that is parallel to vector v with components a, b, c that passes through the point x1, y1, z1 is given as x equals x sub one plus a t, y equals y sub one plus b t, and z equals z sub one plus c t. So the components of the directional vector a, b, c are the coefficients for t. And the point on the line, x sub one, y sub one, z sub one, are the constants in each of the three equations. Vector v is called the directional vector for the line, and a, b, and c are sometimes called the directional numbers. Let's take a look at a line in space so we can get a better idea of what we're talking about. Here we have a graph of a line on the x, y, z coordinate system. And if we rotate this system, you can get a better idea of that line passing through space. So when we talk about the parametric equations of a line in space, we're talking about a line that looks something like this. Now there's one more thing we need to talk about before we take a look at some examples. Sometimes when graphing a line in space, using parametric equations, you may be asked to determine the orientation of the line. And this refers to the direction the points on the line would be plotted as t increases. So here's the graph of the line defined by x equals two t, y equals one plus t, and z equals negative three plus two t. We can see that as t increases, all three of these coordinates will also increase because the coefficients of all of the t terms are positive. More specifically, as t increases, so does z. And you can think of z as the height of the line. So as t increases, this line is moving upward. So we know the orientation of this line would be from this direction to the left or in this direction here. There's one more form of a linear equation we should mention for R3. The parameter t can be eliminated to obtain what's called the symmetric equation of a line in R3. So this form of a line in space is a symmetric equation of a line. To obtain this, what we can do is solve each equation for t and then set them all equal to each other. Let's go and take a look at an example. Here we want to determine the directional vector of the line and two points on the line. Remember the directional vector for the line is determined by the coefficients of the t terms. So the directional vector would have components negative four, positive three, and positive one. Now let's try to find two points on the line. We can find the first point, we'll call it point P, by the constants of each of these equations. So the x coordinate would be positive three, the y coordinate would have to be zero, and the z coordinate would be negative five. But they ask for two points on the line, so to determine one more point on the line, we'll have to select a value for t and sub it into each of these equations. So for the second point, let's call it q. If we let t equal zero, we're gonna come up with the same point that we just found. So let's go ahead and let t equal one. So if t is equal to one, we'd have three minus four, that would be negative one for the x coordinate, positive three for the y coordinate, and then for z we'd have negative five plus one, that would give us negative four. Now remember there's an infinite number of points on a line, these are just two points that are pretty convenient to find. Let's go and take a look at the graph of this line. Here it is in red, and again if we rotate this coordinate system we get a better idea of the line's orientation in space. Notice the line is below the x, y plane until t is greater than positive five. So the orientation of this line would be from left to right as t increases. Let's go and take a look at another example. Here we're given two points on a line. We want to determine the parametric equation of the line and then also determine the symmetric equation of the line. So looking at the parametric equations of a line, we can let either of these points represent x sub one, y sub one, and z sub one. But remember to find the values of a, b, and c, we have to find 
the directional vector of this line. And we can do that by finding the vector in component form that would pass through these two points. So we'll call our directional vector vector v, where the x component will be negative two minus three, the y coordinate will be positive three minus four, and the z component will be negative five minus seven. So our directional vector, which will give us a, b, and c, will be negative five, negative one, and negative 12. And again, we'll go ahead and use the first point, three, four, seven, to represent x sub one, y sub one, and z sub one. But we could use any other point on the line if we wanted to. So the parametric equations of the line passing through these two points will be x equals three minus five t, y will equal four minus one t or minus t, and z will equal seven minus 12t. And the last part of this question asks us to find the symmetric equation of the line. Let's go ahead and do that on this screen. Now we could go ahead and just use the form of this equation here, but I do want to show the connection between this form and the parametric equations. So our parametric equations were x equals three minus five t, y equals four minus t, and z equals seven minus 12t. So what we can do is solve each of these equations for t and then set them equal to each other. To solve this equation for t, we would subtract three on both sides and then divide by negative five. For this equation, we would subtract four and then divide by negative one. And here we would subtract seven and divide by negative 12. Now that we have all these equations equal to t, we can set the right sides equal to each other, which will give us the symmetric equation of this line. So we'd have x minus three divided by negative five equals y minus four divided by negative one equals z minus seven divided by negative 12. And now we have the symmetric equation of this line. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.